Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. IBM is rocking today. We just covered its new speech model in Greenite 3.3 family and that was quite good. IBM has also released these thinking or non-thinking model in instruct mode in 8 billion size as part of their new 3.3 family which we are going to install in this video and we will test it out on various benchmarks. This model again is Apache 2 license which is something really fabulous coming from IBM's. This model features 8 billion parameters and supports a 128k token context length making it suitable for handling a wide range of general instruction following tasks such as reasoning, summarization, text extraction, question answering and various code related activities and we are going to test it out shortly. As usual, these Greenite models are more optimized for business applications and AI assistance across multiple domains. It is also multilingual, mainly geared towards European languages and Chinese. It can also be further fine-tuned for additional languages. I will be talking more about its architecture, but for now, let's start and get it installed. For that, I would like to give a huge shout out to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. This is the VM which I am going to use and this is my GPU card. NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48 GPU of VRAM. Let's create a virtual environment. And if you are also looking to rent a GPU on very very affordable prices, you can find the link to their website in video's description. Plus, I am also going to give you a discount coupon code of 50% for range of GPU so please do check them out and now let's install all the prerequisites and then launch our Jupyter notebook and while that happens let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with the applications in data generation, task automation and world simulation and I will drop the link to their website in video's description. And now let's download our model. And that is in progress. There are four shards of it. And the model is downloaded. Let's now do the entrance. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to check out few of the language stuff, uh, cultural nuances, multilinguality, math coding and few other stuff but before that if you look here first we are giving it a prompt we are then applying this chat template and then in this chat template we are specifying some of the parameters and stuff the thing which is very interesting is this parameter where we are toggling this thinking flag on you can turn it false, but I'm just going to keep it true and we will see how it does the reasoning. So this is what enables the reasoning in this model. And they have this uh, dynamic stuff where you can turn on and turn it off. And then simply we are generating the output with the model. We are decoding it back with tokenizer and printing the response. So let me do that. Now the prompt here is that you are a customer support agent for Phantom Nest which is a luxury smart home company whose AI assistants occasionally become possessed by mischievous ghosts. Write a helpful, slightly unnerved support email explaining how to resolve the latest polter cheese prank of fridge that only dispenses soup at midnight when spoken to it in rhyme. Look here. So it is doing thinking in a specific way where it is understanding the context that to craft a support email that is both helpful and maintain the playful tone of scenario this is what it needs to do so it has created, created a plan for itself and then it has started the response so dear customer uh, how you have this message finds you well and not too chilled from any ex unexpected midnight soup delivery so you see very very playful and then it is just talking about how, how to reset your fridge voice recognition setting. It is talking about all the um, steps which it needs to do. And then should you encounter any further unusual behavior or if the rhymes persist, please don't hesitate. There you go. The Phantom Nest Support Squad. So as I mentioned earlier, 
IBM's Granite models are very very well suited for enterprise use cases and these sort of support emails are part of that. So you can see that the flow of the writing, the smoothness and also the coherency is quite good. It's not really printing out any gibberish. It is staying to the instructions, to the health. So really good stuff. Another common use case is around a roastering. So what I'm going to do here, I have just given it, I'll just paste it again, sorry. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it a scenario, some of the constraints, and I will ask it to prepare this roster. So I have just given it a prompt that we need a lead scientist and a technician for two parallel science workshops every Sunday afternoon. This is the detail of workshop one. This is workshop two. And then these are the doctors available. These are the technicians available. And then we are also telling it that these scientist technicians don't work well together. And then to create a detailed staff schedule for the next month, ensuring each workshop is staffed appropriately and all constraints are met. So because there are some constraints on the availability here too. So let's run this. While it runs, let's check the VRAM consumption. So it is consuming around 16.6 .6 gig of VRAM. Not really bad for a 9 uh, billion model, I think pretty good. Anyway, so let's wait for it to see what it produces. And there you go, it has created the roster. So first it has understood the context. It is going step by step, the chain of thought is there. And then it is creating a plan. It is just evaluating it, verify. And then it is also creating it for the second workshop. Wow, and this is the response. How good is that? It is spot on. So you see, it's very, very concise. Even with and um, with thinking and without thinking, we haven't tested the without thinking one, but let's test it out now. Now, I'm just going to turn this thinking to false here. And primarily, I'm checking the multilinguality. So I'm asking you to translate this I love you in various languages and then also select a random language. Some of the languages are in its data set, some of them are not. So let's see what it does here. And there you go. So it looks pretty good already. So check uh, is also good formal and informal Arabic, Portuguese, Hindi, Swahili, Mandarin, Persian. Wow. You know what? All of these look spot on. It says, unfortunately, ancient runes don't translate phrases like modern languages. They were used uh, for writing Germanic language. Nice. Yep. That's good, but and but there's a rough phonetic approximation. And then even Urdu is good, but I think for Urdu script, it is using the Hindi script, which is not correct. But it has identified that it is similar to Hindi. And then for random language, it has gone with Esperanto. Interesting. And then it has also given us some stuff there. But you see, one major difference is there is no thinking part. It is straight up response. Okay, let's check out another one. And I'm just going to turn it back to true. So I'm asking it to write 10 sentences ending with the word happy. And the thinking response obviously takes longer. And while it uh, does that, let's have a very, very quick um, touch base upon its uh, architecture. So this Granite 8 billion builds upon the Granite 3.3 base model. It introduces specialized capabilities for structured reasoning by using think and slice think, as we already saw. And this structural enhancement supports more transparent problem solving at the moment. For the training, it uses a very um, powerful IBM's Blue Vela supercomputing cluster, which ha which uh, used NVIDIA H100 GPUs. As a result, um, it really shows a lot of good performance on various benchmarks, including Alpaca, Eval, and Arena Hard, which is available on their model card. And I will drop the link to it in video's description. 
So there you go. Let's check it out. So first wrong. It doesn't end with happy. It ends with happiness. Second one is wrong. And then it is just checking, I believe. So most of it, it has got wrong. <laughs> okay, it says, so even it thought, but it was unable to do so. How about if I turn it off and then try again to see if it does any better this time. Let's wait for it. Okay, let's check it out. So I think only one is correct. The rest of it is totally off. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, let's try out a math one. So I'm just going to go with analytical geometry and asking it to find me the equation of circle with center this and radius this. Okay, so let's check it out. It has done something without thinking and the answer is correct. It is 16. Okay, let's try out another math uh, plus statistical question and I have turned the thinking on. It is just asking um, about the exam score which has a mean of 75. So we just need to find the Z score. Let's see. And there you go. So let's check out the Z score. If I scroll down, the thinking looks quite good. The direction looks good. And the answer is correct, 1.5. Very nice. Okay, so the math looks pretty good. Let's check out the coding one. Now in this first coding exercise, I'm going to ask it to build me a very simple task manager in Java. And thinking is on. Okay, there you go. So it has created a plan and then it has going about thinking and then look at the application. So it has defined the class pretty good. All the methods are there for the class. Even override function is there. Very nice to string function. And then it is going about task manager class. You see the quality of coding is very, very good for IBM Granite really. And then there is some explanation and dependencies. Pretty good. Even it has generated this POM file, POM.xml. And then some instructions as how to get it running. So look, I believe very, very good model for coding too. So that is pretty good. Let's try out one more. I'm just going to ask it to identify and repair this bug in this Ruby method. And now let's check out the response. So it is talking about what is happening. And then it has, after thinking, it has identified some of the points. And then it has given us the revised version, which is spot on. Really, really uh, good answer. I would say not only it has rectified it, but it is also explaining it in detail what exactly it did. And then it has revised it again. And then again, explanation of changes and then some conclusion. Pretty good. Okay, let's ask it a very complex SQL question. Now what I'm doing here, I have given it a huge long SQL and I'm asking it to optimize this SQL. Now, if you have ever done SQL optimization as part of your DPA job, you know that it is pain in the back. So let's see without even any schema information, what model does here. Okay, so the model has come back with the response and it is just analyzing the query first. And you see it is you know, very, very, um, I would say in a concise way, pinpointing the issues that CD stuff and then the final select statement, it is coalescing it, it is checking the predicate and then it is understanding the query. Looks pretty good. There is even an indexing recommendation, which I believe that uh, should also take into the consideration the data distribution, but anyway, it's not bad. And then uh, additional consideration, very nice. Database statistics, query execution plan, very nice. So because it's uh, length got terminated, but I think it is on the right direction. This is fabulous, really. I'm very impressed. Okay, so to end it with a real world scenario, let's check it out. Every morning in my fluffy pink bathrobe, I take out the trash just as, just as my gorgeous 26 year old neighbor steps out with her tiny bag of garbage and a sly smile. She always locks eyes, leans close and asks if I want to compare our trash. These days, 
I'm tossing out single grapes and socks just for a reason, to meet her. Yesterday we ended up giggling over who had the naughtier leftovers. Now even my garbage bin is blushing. I have run out of trash and have started accidentally throwing out random household items just to see her. What should I do next? Now, you know, jokes aside, if you see, I'm also being very suggestive here, this accidentally in a double quotes. I'm just trying to see if Potter understands these subtle nuances. So if I just come down, look at the thinking um, part where model is understanding that this is a light-hearted, playful interaction between the narrator and their neighbor. These are the key elements that infatuation is evident, narrator's action driven by desire to engage with the neighbor, the goal seems to be to foster a connection beyond that trash related banter, very nice, you see. And then it has understood what the points are. So thinking is not very prolonged, which is quite good. And then these are the possible steps which it could include directly expressing, suggesting and all that stuff, respecting boundaries. And there you go. So the response is like direct but casual expression of interest, so just a non-trash related activity, respect boundaries, patience, and then remember is the key is to transla transition from a playful trash centered flirtation to a more grounded, genuine interaction while being mindful. So look, I believe very balanced, very rational and reasonable response. It's a pretty good model. Um, I think math coding multilinguality is really supreme. Whereas language is good too, if not excellent, we saw that there were some mistakes, but all in all, pretty good effort in terms of a reasoning model from IBM. Let me know your thoughts. If you are interested in other IBM models, which I have been covering for a long time, check out the channel and you should be able to find heaps of granite models, um, which I have been covering for, I think, almost an year now. And IBM has done a lot and lot of these models if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps thank you for watching